Hi everybody, it's Marina, and today we're going to talk about whether or not going to sleep at 3 a.m. cured my insomnia. So if you've been watching these videos for the last three months, four months that I've been making them, in the beginning I talked a lot about how bad my insomnia was. How I wasn't getting any sleep, how I felt really foggy, how stress over COVID and the pandemic was really messing with my life. And eventually I got to a breaking point where I tried every sort of like traditional recommendation that I had gotten to cure my insomnia, which I have been in lifelong insomniac. Even as a baby, I wasn't really a sleeper. So when I say that I have insomnia, frequently people say, oh yeah, I get that sometimes. Like, no, I mean, in general, I sleep or for most of my life, including my childhood, I sleep between three and four hours a night. I am not a sleeper. It's only recently that I've been able to sleep more than four or five hours a night. And now I get on average between six and seven hours, which was how much I was getting before the pandemic hit. I'd made other changes to my health, primarily addressing my eating disorder, which actually helped me to finally get anything approaching a decent night's sleep. I really, um, for most of my life, just thought I wasn't really the kind of person that slept a lot. And to be honest, I'm still kind of not. Then COVID hit and all my old insomnia is back with the added bonus that now a four hour night of sleep is not normal. And I was just feeling really like total fucking garbage, honestly, just really, really bad. And I did every single thing that I knew to do that I had been sort of like clinically advised to do to cure my insomnia over the years. None of it worked. None of it worked. I was getting an hour of sleep some nights. I was getting no sleep at all some nights. And I felt like trash. I really just felt bad. And finally, I kind of had this realization where I just thought, you know what? Fuck it. If I'm not going to sleep, I'm not going to sleep. I'm not going to feel bad about it. I'm not going to make myself feel bad about it. I'm just going to listen to my body and do what it wants. If it doesn't want to go to sleep, it doesn't have to. I'll do something that I enjoy doing instead of trying to sleep. Because trying to sleep was torturing me. It was torture. So I did that. I just stayed awake until I felt tired. And that finally got me some sleep, got me some good rest. Because I would just read, you know, or play pleasant video game like Animal Crossing until I felt tired, which was usually around three or four in the morning. Then I'd go get in bed, go to sleep, and I tended to wake up between 10 and 11. After a couple of weeks, I realized that just about every night, I go to sleep between three or four in the morning, and I wake up in the morning between 10 and 11. And then I went and talked to, you know, I have a therapist, so I talked to her. I also have a nutritionist that I speak to once a month. I, I talked to her. We talked about circadian rhythms. We talked about good health. We talked about sort of like body-led health decisions, and we implemented some guidelines. So now I have a bedtime again, but it's 3 a.m. At 3 a.m. I have an alarm that goes off, you know, it's a quiet alarm, and it just says get ready for bed. And usually around 3 a.m. I find that I'm feeling ready for bed. So I go brush my teeth, wash my face, close the house up, put away whatever I was working on, and I'm usually in bed between 3.30 and 4 a.m. And then what's happening to me right now with this new like bedtime is something that literally never happened to me before in my life. A lot of people talk about how you know you have a healthy sleep schedule or you know you have a healthy bedtime if 30 minutes after you get in bed, you're asleep. That never happened to me before. I used to take at least an hour, usually two or three, after I got in bed, before I got to sleep. Re regardless of what I was doing. If I was reading, if I was not reading, believe me, it's been 35 years, I've tried it all. This new schedule, when I get in bed at three or four, I am in bed, I'm asleep by four, 4.30. About 30 minutes after I get in bed, asleep. And the other thing that's happening that never happened to me before is that I am sleeping soundly. I stay asleep the whole night. I don't wake up. I don't feel restless. I also don't get woken up by things that used to wake me up. So my husband getting up, getting ready, feeding the dogs, getting his workday going, showering. Our house is so small that I can hear all of those things. And those things used to bug me and they used to wake me up. Now they don't. 
even if we get like a, an early delivery or something and our dogs start barking and go kind of crazy, I'll wake up for that, but then I'll go straight back to sleep. If it's not that my time to wake up, I don't wake up. And that is really amazing. That's literally never happened to me before in my life. The other unintended consequence of having this sleep schedule is that since the quarantine, me and my husband have been in our 920 square foot house every day, all day long. I have asthma. I also have an autoimmune disease. It does not make me immunocompromised, but it is. it does affect me. And so we haven't been going out at all in, unless it's really, really necessary, which tends to be about once a week. My husband will go out and get supplies or whatever. So we've been together in the house 24 hours a day, <laughs> waking up, sleeping, eating together every day, day after day. And even though we love each other and even though we've been together for 17 years, it can get a little bit hard when you're never alone. And this has been an amazing solution. So he goes to bed around 10 or 11. I stay up until three o'clock in the morning. So I have my alone time in the house to be creative, to write and draw and read and just um, do whatever I want, putz around. It's just really nice to have that time to myself. And then on the other end, he gets up at six or seven. I don't get up until 11, 10 or 11. He has the morning to do the same. So it's been incredible for us on that sort of sphere. The other thing that has happened, sort of like negative um, consequence of this new sleep schedule, is that there were a lot of 9 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., and 10 a.m. meetings that I don't can't be at anymore, so I had to change those, or there's like networking and business, um, you know, morning business thing meetings that I'm not able to be in anymore. Um, to be honest, it's no great loss. Everybody who I value, who was willing to change, uh, if we had a regular meeting, was willing to change their meeting schedule, you know, adjust it down so that I could be awake and feeling good in the meeting. And I found other business networking things that happen later on in the day to replace the things that I don't go to that are in the morning anymore. And the truth is, I've never been a morning person in my whole life. So I've never really enjoyed going to morning networking things. I just did it because it was easy to put the morning networking thing before my work day. The other thing is that I am a far more productive at work than I was when I was an insomniac mess. And also it feels a lot easier for me to have a less than eight hour day. One of the things that I found in my experience of working is that every hour after eight, and actually, honestly, every hour after six hours of working a day is less uh, productive by half than the hour before it. So now that that's a thing I can incorporate into my work day, I spend less hours at work, but I get more done. I've accomplished a lot more since I started this new sleep schedule than I was accomplishing before it. So, oh, oh, and then the one other unintended consequence is that at first we have a dog who's part shepherd. One of our dogs is part shepherd and he was a little bit miffed. Um, if you have shepherds, you know that they like it when everybody is together and does the same thing at the same time. So for the first couple of weeks, he was a little bit upset that Ben was going to bed and I wasn't going to bed. But now that that's the routine, he kind of has adjusted his own routine. You know, he used to go, when we went to bed, he would go to bed. Now, when Ben goes to bed, he goes and checks on him um, after I get, because we sit in the bed together and like have our nighttime routine. And then I go and have my time. And the shepherd will sort of just decide who he wants to watch, I guess. <laughs> At that point, he's not stressed out anymore. And in fact, he's sleeping better too, because we're not stressed out. So... That is the end of my Did I Cure My Insomnia by Going to Sleep at 3 a.m. video. If you like my philosophy, if you like the kind of stuff I do, if you like, I don't know, this whole thing, check out my company. They're called Letteromatic. I'll put their name right here, actually, because down here is where the captions go, because we have professional captions now. So check me out. Check out my website, letteromatic.com. See you tomorrow.